I'm sitting with Jonathan and he's driving because he's going to be the second body for the market today. So we are just, it is 9.20 in the morning. We are on the expressway heading downtown and we should arrive for 9.34 according to the GPS, at which point we will find parking and start unloading the car and we will head out to the locale where market is being held. So that's just a little update and we will catch you again shortly. since the event opened and I've made zero sales. And the only reason that I'm out in the hallway and not in the event room is because they're playing music. And obviously, YouTube does not like when there's music playing in the background for copyright reasons. So um, I just wanna show you that my table, you can see that there's a lot of vendors and vendors booths and things like that but my table is actually in the back behind that black curtain um, so you can get to it by going this way or you can get to it by going that way but this black curtain right here is a wall and my table with all the other vendors is behind that wall and there's no way for anyone to see that we're behind there. So while it looks really busy from the outside right now with all the vendors and that kind of thing, there's a whole bunch of vendors in the back that are not having anybody come because nobody, nobody knows we're there. And I'm really worried because for the three days that I paid this morning to be here, um, I think I paid something like $300 including taxes and right now I don't know if you can see but they just put up over there that pink sign which hopefully is going to attract people to go behind but um, I don't know there's a lot of vendors like in the back room that are pretty pretty angry about it because we're not getting any foot traffic and with this event what happened the last time they rented in this area was they had a different locale and so there were more people 
um, more vendors were visible. They weren't hidden behind this giant wall. So not happy about that. Worried that I'm not going to make my money back. But I'll just do a quick walkthrough so you can see some of what's going on. And I'll have to mute it for copyright reasons. Right, so this is just a view of the front of the store. And you can kind of see that, I don't know, it's like they brought their A game. <laughs> but, um, you know, you could get smaller tables in the front if you wanted, like those ladies uh, in the back there. And But I think like most of the front was just people that had paid for booths and that needed more space because they had clothing to sell. Um, so that's our pink sign, hopefully directing people to the back and another vendor taping arrows onto the floor to hopefully, again, direct people towards the back store, which I believe was the old stock room of the storefront that was rented out. And these are some of the other vendors that are hidden behind the wall. Um, so yeah, you have jewelry, you have potters, you have artists. And of course, my favorite one over here uh, is Dolce Sweets Chocolatier, who I have spent crazy amounts of money as supporting because her chocolates are just so so good so that's definitely something you guys should check out if you can and she does a range of like body care products as well um so yeah i mean really really good melt in your mouth chocolate these are floral displays and next to that uh, a jewelry display another jewelry display and then this is atelier chaos who is a potter and i end up actually doing a trade, I think, and getting a creamer from that stand, which I will show you guys a little bit later. And here there's some crystals and some jewelry. And of course, our stand with Jonathan kind of hiding in the background looking bored as. <laughs> and here is another artist uh, who I end up supporting as well. Now just here, this is the back view right here of the wall that is blocking us. Uh, from being seen by all those lovely people in the front, which I will show you in just a sec. So we round the corner past these changing cabins. Um, so a lot of buzz in the front, but really nobody knowing what's going on with us. Hey, you guys. It is 3.30 in the morning. It is 3.30 in the morning, September 15th. It is the morning after the show. Uh, you are the first people I'm speaking to, as you can probably imagine. Um, it's not always a given, but sometimes when I'm awake, I do speak to my sister because she is obviously, as you probably are aware, if you've been here before, uh, she does live in Australia. <laughs> so there is that time difference. But today is not not one of those days. Um I got up uh, to pee at 2.30 in the morning, and that was after going to bed somewhere around 10 after market last night. I left the market at about 10 after 8. The market finished at 8. It was so dead, guys. Can I tell you? It was so dead. They, um, if you were, I, I can't remember if I talked about it before, but I'm pretty sure I walked you guys through the layout of the market and there was like that big wall and I was placed in the vendor booths like behind that wall which was not ideal um and there was like a lot of complaints from the other vendors that were there because originally when this organization had done a um I'm gonna try and fix this maybe that's better I don't know is that is that better guys is that better for like the lighting on my eyes Maybe not. Um, I like glasses. I'm not going to give them up, you know, but I, I am aware of this glare. So, you know, bear with me. But um, apparently when Turquoise Tre Treasures had done this event in the past, they had like a big room where one could walk around in a circle. And that's not the case. In this case, it was like a storefront. And so the vendors in the back didn't have the benefit of being seen from far across the room like they would have been had it been like a big circular um, organization or what have you. So I only got home probably around 8.39 and I just really just wanted to veg. And by the time I got to sleep, it was 10 or 10.30. And, you know, as it happens, as I've said, 
uh, bladder woke me up and then, and then the intrusive thoughts, then the, all the things that I have to do today. Um, I got some Etsy orders yesterday. Looks like it's picking up a little bit on Etsy for the fabric store. And then I realized that I forgot my tripod with the rest of my stuff <laughs> that I left at market. But today is Friday and it's the last day to mail. So I have to be up early anyway because I have to fill my Etsy orders from last night and fill the leather stripper orders as well because I'm going to be leaving on Sunday and today is the last mailing day before I leave for a week. So I have to make sure I get all those orders out, which means running to the locker later today. Thankfully, I have Addison with me, so she's going to help me. It should go like a little bit faster, but I'm not going to be able to get footage of anything that I do today. Right now, what I'm using on my desk is like the small little desk tripod. It's just like a tiny little thing, but I don't have my big tripod that I usually use um, when I'm filming the order packaging. So if you ordered from me, and uh, you were expecting to see your order being filmed uh, between September 14th and 15th. It's not, it's not going to happen. I don't have my tripod here. So if you ordered on one of these days, I'm really sorry. But I'm not going to be able to film your order because I don't have the proper equipment because I left it behind. So I just wanted to say that. Um, talk a little bit about yesterday's sales. Um, it was the pits. I think that they were expecting double, at least double, at least double the population of the clientele that arrived. I think somewhere around two hours into market, only 175 people had shown up. Somewhere around six hours into market, like maybe there was 375 or something like that because I happened to periodically be checking in with the event organizer and even she was a little bit shocked you know like she's a human too she she uh was getting a lot of hate yesterday because I guess some of the vendors there were looking for a scapegoat but I don't think that they were truly realizing you know how difficult it is to put together an event of this nature um I know that Fauna Rose on her YouTube channel, Megan, talks a lot about, uh, you know, how hard it is for her to organize her market. So, like, I know it's not easy. You know, there's a lot of stress when you're a market creator. And, like, guys, like, there's a reason why we're not all doing it, right? And I can't really speak for all of you, but there's definitely a reason why I'm not doing it. <laughs> I'm not going to organize a market. It sounds like it's really insane. So, like, um, I'm happy just to participate as a vendor. So, hopefully, today will go better. Today's Friday. I'm there today, and I'll be there again tomorrow. So, hopefully, we're going to get a better turnout in terms of people. Um, but, yeah, as far as sales goes, so, the pricing structure was a little bit weird for the tables. So, for this market, I paid $70 for the Thursday table. Everybody was paying the same thing. So, whether we were placed in the front where everyone could see us, or we placed in the back where no one could see us because we had this like big black wall <laughs> blocking access to us. Um, but everybody in the market paid the same rate. So the Thursday table was 70 Canadian. The Friday rate, I think, is 80 Canadian. The Saturday rate is 100 Canadian, which I think is really expensive for a table. And the Sunday rate, I think, is 65 because they were expecting for some reason, like more people because there's office towers and it's like a big multi-level shopping mall. So, um, so anyway, that's what I paid. I made $75 in sales, um, which covered my table fee with a 5% profit. However, I did pay $20 to park there <laughs> because I was coming from like a half an hour away. So uh, with all my gear, so I paid $20 to park. So I'm $15 in the hole, but that's just for, that's just for yesterday. So hopefully today will go better. Um, and yeah, so that's my little market update. I am having coffee in a Clementine and Fiona mug. Um, this is a really bad sample of what your mug will not look like. Um, when you purchase a Clementine and Fiona mug <laughs> from the Clementine and Fiona store. Wink, wink. 
Um, no, your mug will not look like this. The picture, if you do decide to purchase a mug because you want to support me, I realized that all this time I could be having coffee on camera. I should be showing my products, but this is not the best product perhaps to be showing because, um, I did not have a good image resolution when I printed out the sample of the, uh, when pigs fly pattern. Uh, so if you do decide to order a mug, this mug or any mug, any mug that is available on the Etsy site will have a much, much sharper image and bold pattern and bold colors because I did go through quite some troubleshooting to get the images to look uh, up to par and certainly up to Zahava standards, which if you haven't guessed by now, are quite high. So uh, this inferior mug is one that I am using at home and I promise you since Christmas is coming up if this is something that you would like to order or any of the Clementine and Fiona patterns for people that you love it will look way better. <laughs> <laughs> it will look way better than this. So yeah, um, I'm going to have my coffee, go through some emails, set up my Etsy store for the week that I'm going to be away just uh, to change the shipping delay from one to three business days to one to 10 business days. That way people can still shop and expect their orders to arrive on time. Uh, when I got home yesterday, just as a little aside, I found... hundred US dollars hidden under my keyboard because my husband, what a mensch. Um, he knows that I, I'm, I'm kind of broke right now. <laughs> I'm kind of broke. Like, and, uh, and I'm going away with Jonathan, um, to the DR on Sunday and I didn't have any money and I didn't ask for any, but Eric left me some, some mad money which was super nice of him. So, um, yeah, I'm, I did have like a little bit of a baby food haul that I wanted to show you guys, but again, I don't have my tripod. So I'm bringing some licorice. I'm bringing some various chocolates for Phil and, um, the licorice of course is for Frank and I'm, uh, I'm not going to be very content heavy on this video because I don't have a tripod. So, um, yeah, so that's the update and I will see you again shortly when I can hopefully give you some more market content and, and things like that. Cause that's what I'll be doing today. So stay tuned. Right. So I know that uh, you probably saw a lot of this footage yesterday, but I wanted to show you guys again only because there has been some moving and shuffling uh, overnight. And even though my neighbors to either side of me uh, were the same, they did sell some of their products. So maybe you can see uh, if you've got the eagle eye <laughs> what uh, what products were different. Um up there on the top shelf of the box on the left is the creamer that I bought. So I will show you that again a little bit later. This lady was here yesterday. She has her daughter with her today uh, or on that day <laughs> because by the time you guys see this video, it'll be like way, way after the market. So um, just showing you that again so you could get a second look. And uh, Dolce Chocolates has not arrived yet. Oh, that's not her stand. Sorry, that's her neighbor. That is Dolce. So she comes in. She left her display of like teas and bath salts and stuff. But because the chocolate needs to stay cold and she usually comes with a cooler, um, she will probably be arriving shortly. Um, so she's not there now. But then over here, we have some new vendors who were not here yesterday, such as this stand right here of vintage and upcycled clothing. Uh, those are the changing booths and the event organizer, Elise, who has worked super duper hard uh, getting all of this together. Um, and that lady was here yesterday, but not in that spot. So she had to move her table and this lady as well was situated up in the front yesterday. And now I think she has a bigger table here in the back, but she is in the back. So I don't know if that's going to affect her sales um, or not. I, I didn't actually find out, but I probably should have and could have. And this lady as well was here yesterday, but her table had to move. And then we have a new lady joining us with a macrame 
um, selection. And I believe she's got a four foot table. And I don't know if you guys, um, well, you probably already saw, but like the, uh, the balloons are making a huge difference. I don't know if you've seen this or not before. I can't even remember what footage I've shown you, but they added more balloons. Like we were actually in there earlier today, all helping out Elise in the, in the morning. She had like a, a, a balloon machine, like blowing up machine. Is there a name for that? I don't know. It escapes me. Um, this lady is new as well. So yeah, so I think that it looks like a lot better. I think it's a lot more obvious that there are stores in the back now. And I think they put some arrows on the floor or in the process of doing it. Um, there is a, uh, somebody supposed to set up there that hasn't arrived yet. I'm not really sure what they make. And this lady with the, um, vegan makeup and, skincare products that purple booth you saw just a second ago she was also in the back yesterday and had moved up to the front so maybe for her it's a lot better that's the uh, turquoise treasures they're the event organizers uh booth and um she's got some really really neat vintage things um she does well at market she does sell online but i i think she was telling me that she does like much much better at market because people can like really see the stuff and in terms of like shipping glassware and things like that that can be that can be a bit of a pain you know in the you know what um lots of great vintage evening bags and I think we're just going to see in a second she's got like a little bit of her branding and a wee little bit of swag just you know some regular tote bags and stuff like that and this one says um thanks. It's vintage. <laughs> I like that. It's kind of, kind of cute. So, uh, so that's her booth. And then off to the left over here, we have another vintage seller. I think that some people that were around yesterday or the, you know, the day before, um, you know, brought new stock to like stock up whatever they, they will have sold the previous day. Um, and yeah, I mean, this lady hasn't arrived here on the left yet. Neither has this lady who's doing also vintage stuff. But yeah, I'm really, really liking the balloons. And uh, it looks like Addison has a customer. Say hi, Addison. All right. She's not playing hooky today on Friday when she should totally be in school. All right, guys, see you in a bit. So, quick update. Yesterday, I sold out of the Corgi Bums zipper pouches that I had. Um, and also, I had a heat pack, like a rice heat pack as well, that had like little Halloween cats on it and stuff. So, that sold out. Um, I had catnip cake toys sell yesterday and a couple of scrunchies. And today just started maybe six minutes ago um so yeah that's just a little update for now because i wanted to remember to tell you guys what did sell before i forgot um and uh yep so that's it i think i still have some corgi bums fabric at home so i could probably make some more for the next show but for now they're all sold out so that's good all right see you soon Hey guys, so I'm here with Saharnas, which is amazing because it sounds so much like my name, Zahava, as you guys know. So it's amazing to be neighbors with such a lovely creator. And I just wanted to show you guys that I bought from her um, something that is very, and we'll, we'll flip the camera so you guys can see that properly when, uh, when it's on film. But it says, I support local artists and all I got was this print and I loved it. And on her stand, um, it does not actually have her logo on it, which was kind of, I was upset about that. So I ordered this one special. I like it with the logo. Yeah, yeah. with the logo, it's really nice and it gives you some branding. So yeah, so I just wanted to show you that I bought this because I thought it would look really, really nice over the sewing machine. So you guys could see that when I'm filming and uh, just wanted you to meet this lovely artist next to me over here, which, you know, we, we saw her, her booth <laughs> earlier today while she was setting up. But that's our little purchase Thank for today. You. Say hi, everyone. Hello. So it's 10 after four. Um, sold two classic scrunchies, which is good. But I'm a long ways away from making back my table fee, which I think was $80 today. So... I don't really know how optimistic I'm 
feeling because um, there's another four hours left and yeah it's just um, Addison abandoned me she abandoned me so like I'm alone um, and that's okay because there's other vendors that are alone as well it's just the you know when you gotta go pee and stuff you gotta take everything with you so um, so yeah so that's just my little mid-afternoon check-in and hopefully things will pick up um, I would really like to make my table be back but I don't know if it's gonna happen so fingers crossed <laughs> right guys so time for a little bit of a vlog I it's Saturday it's my last day at this market I did manage to make back my table fee which is great um, so now I just have to cover parking and the uh, money that I spent on lunch so if I can get that done then I'll have broken even so day is young we still have I think three hours left of market so if I can make if I can make another 60 or 70 dollars then I'll have broken even I won't have to worry about the money I spent on groceries lunch parking and um, it'll have been worth it to get my name out there at least so yeah I mean so far so good uh, catnip kick toys doing really well with those surprisingly so we're just gonna sit and wait and see what else sells Hey guys, so the market day is done. I'm with Eric, we're on our way to a friend of mine's for dinner tonight uh, because it is Erev Rosh Hashanah, so it's the uh, second night of the Jewish New Year. We've been invited to a friend's house, so that is where we're on our way to eat dinner. She's got a fantastic spread prepared for us. Um, we do have the GPS on, so you may hear it yelling at us in the background while I'm vlogging, but I did wanna give you guys a rundown of the market while it's still kind of fresh in my head rather than have numbers kind of scrolling across the screen so essentially I did end up 100 meters keep right at the fork follow signs for auto room 15 Sud Quebec 117 North <laughs> I, I may edit out the GPS if that happens I'll probably just stop talking and let it talk and then edit edit these bits out where it's yelling at us but um, yeah, so I wanted you to know that I did make back my table fee, but I ended up being altogether about $25 or $30 in the hole. So here's how I calculated it. I, I made back my table fees, which uh, were $70 for the Thursday, $80 for the Friday, and $100 for the Saturday, which was today. So I believe if my mathing is correct, it is $150, $250, $250. It was $250, right? 150 and 100 is 250. So uh, I made that back. I'm not counting taxes because as a Canadian corporation, I do get my taxes back. So I'm not counting that, but I am counting the uh, parking, which I spent $40 on for the Thursday and the Friday. And today the Saturday was a weekend rate of $8 for the parking. And I made um, a purchase on Thursday of some uh, like Subway, like Dagwoods, like right sub sandwiches to eat for lunch for myself and Jonathan. And I made a purchase of some sushi at the grocery the store. Meters, use the right two lanes to turn slightly right onto Boulevard Technology. Yes. <laughs> so some sushi at the grocery store um, on yesterday and then today there was also a little bit of a grocery bill something like $13 so all of those things plus the cup of coffee or two I'm probably altogether about $50 in the hole but that's okay because I would consider that a great success I, I sold a lot of things I think I sold like one wristlet um, Sorry, my Use the right holding my phone in my hand, right so it's kind of shaky. I hope it's not too shaky for you guys. I'm doing my best to hold the phone steady on these Montreal roads, which are full of potholes. Yeah, these roads are like full of potholes, so I'm really sorry. We're just, you know, this is Montreal. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so like I, I did. Uh, I sold pretty much a lot of everything all together this weekend. I sold, this is really bouncy, eh? Yeah. I think I'm just gonna wait until we get on the highway. We're not getting on the highway. Oh, we're not getting on the highway. Look at the highway. Great. 
service road. Yeah. Service road. We're not getting on the highway, people. It's like gridlocked on the highway. Um, we're just gonna have to talk over a shaky camera, it looks like. So I'm really sorry about that, but uh, I will forget all these things if I do the vlog later or tomorrow as I'm getting prepared to leave. So very important that we do this now. I sold pretty much one of everything uh, over the weekend. I did engage in some trades, as you know, or I may have mentioned, I can't remember. My Halloween stuff was kind of a runaway success. Uh, I, I guess I should have known better um, cause Halloween stuff does tend to sell pretty much all year round, pretty steady. People are super into Halloween. So I will have to remake some dainty scrunchies. I will have to remake some Lush. I have a lot of classics, so I don't need to worry about that. But the next show I'm going to be doing with this event organizer is going to be, um, Bug is looking at me like he doesn't want to be on camera. So I'm just going to change the phone here I'm getting I'm getting the look of discipline from him behind <laughs> over there um, so I definitely have to make more of those scrunchies the Halloween scrunchies I did sell one wristlet I think I mentioned that and I think that's it I'm not really gonna do more stock because I do want to release a spring summer. I figured with the scrunchies, especially if I'm going to be doing markets with Made by Maurice, I don't think I want to be doing monthly launches because that's like really, really labor intensive and super like heavy on the mental load. So I don't want to be doing that. I want to be um, doing maybe like a fall, winter, spring, summer collection, but certainly not releasing scrunchies every month like a lot of more established businesses do so that's about the wrap up for the market uh, not really much else to report aside from the fact that I'm $50 in the hole but it's okay because I met some really really nice people I um, got to network a little bit look at the other vendors uh, really get to know the event organizers as well so all in all I would say it was a really good experience I'm looking forward to doing the market in October and there's another one with the same event organizer that's happening again in December uh, so yeah I'm going to be doing that and uh, I suppose at this point um, with all this lovely Montreal traffic going on around us I will give you this video's outro so I want to thank you guys for coming to spend some of your day with me again you know I love you so much especially those of you that stick around until the end of the video you guys are amazing I want to remind you to like the channel uh, subscribe to the channel like the video one of these days I'll get it right but you know what to do and I will see you again in the next one ciao for now